Yes. I'm pausing my PhD. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Thomas. I am halfway through my PhD in astrophysics where I study the gas around galaxies. And I'm here with a bit of an update because yeah, as of right now, I have paused my PhD research. And I wanna give you a bit of an update, tell you why, tell you what I'm gonna be doing in the next wee while, and just sort of generally explain give you an update. First off, no, I am not pausing my PhD because I'm not enjoying it. I love my PhD. I love what I'm doing. I love studying astrophysics and the gas around galaxies. Nor am I pausing it because of like the challenge, because it's too difficult. I, I love the challenge. It's hard work, but I love the challenge. And just to dispel any concerns, no, this is not health related either. I am pausing my PhD fundamentally because of one reason. Money. Calm down, calm down. I'm not selling out. Fundamentally, this is down to money, but ultimately it's because of how I get to do the PhD. I am funded. Most people who do PhDs, at least in the sciences, are funded by somebody, normally a research council or a centre for doctoral training. I am funded by the latter. I'm funded by the UKRI, Centre for Doctoral Training, in Artificial Intelligence, Machine Learning and Advanced Computing, also known as AIMLAC. A Centre for Doctoral Training is just what it says on the tin. It's a, it's a training programme that's designed to support PhDs in specific areas that the UK Research Councils, UKRI, want to facilitate, want to support. And one of those things is things like AI, machine learning, and advanced computing. Now, I sit in the advanced computing part. I work with big simulations. And part of the requirements for this funding is that for six months during my four-year PhD, I pause it for six months and I go and do an industry placement. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I am not going to be doing astrophysics for the next six months. I'm going to be away doing something else. Now, if you just wanted to you know, know why I was... Pausing the PhD, that's it, entry replacement, cool. Feel free to go, you don't have to stick around if you don't want to. But uh, thanks for popping in. If you do want to know what I'm going to be up to and what that means for me, for making videos, for my PhD, then stick around for the rest of the video. And if you're doing that, you might as well subscribe. So the real question is, why now? Well, there's a few reasons. Most of them work around the specifics of my PhD project. Some of them work around the overall logistics of a PhD generally. So I'm doing my PhD in the UK in astrophysics and generally speaking that looks like three projects that each last about a year that you do in series or somewhat in parallel and then you sit them together into a thesis at the end and hand it in. Some explicitly do that as thesis by publication, you literally staple your papers together and hand that in. Others it's a little bit more nuanced you take kind of what you've done in papers and then just reformat it for the thesis. I have finished the first project. Now yes I'm about two years in and I finished the first project almost. Paper still to be revised before it's accepted but the point is research ramps up. You do less in your first two years and a lot in your third year because you've just got a lot better at what you're doing. So one project done. Second project in progress. So the second project, I have to run a load of new galaxy simulations and those are going to take a while. In fact, they've started running now and I think they're going to last somewhere about the six month mark to run all of them, judging at current pace of running. It's rather convenient that it's about six months, isn't it? So yeah, that's part of the, um, the timing motivation. I've got six months worth of simulations, they might as well run while I'm away doing other things. The other factor is actually my third project, which I'm almost finished putting in a compute proposal for to get more computer time on a different, bigger computer that will let me run yet more simulations for project three, which I'll do over the last year or so of my PhD. That compute allocation, assuming that I get what I'm asking for, at least most of what I'm asking for, will start in April 2026, which will be a couple of months after I come back from placement, starting the placement now. So that's also part of the motivation. I get a couple of months ahead of that compute proposal time where I can work on that. So, so it's kind of landed rather perfectly. I'm at a point now where I can pause my research and just let simulations run, but I'll come back in time to do the preparations for the third project papers, which is great. This is actually landing at about the best time for my research. As for the other motivations of the logistics of a PhD generally, 
I am in the final year of the AIMLAC CDT, so there won't be another cohort after me. And the advice from on high from the more senior PhD students in the CDT was do it earlier. Don't do it in like the latter half of your third year. Don't do it at the start of your fourth year. Do it like at the start of year three. Do it as early as you reasonably can because that way it doesn't screw up with trying to do things like writing up and submitting your thesis and all that sort of stuff. It also means that you don't spend six months away and come back and have to immediately try and write having spent six months not thinking about the PhD. So all of this logistically is why I'm doing it now. So what am I going to be doing? This is the big question for everyone, me included to be honest. I can tell you a little bit, but I can't tell you a whole amount. I am recording this on literally day one of my placement. I have not met with the people who are doing it yet. Um, they have, they were unavailable today and they've given me a lot of stuff to read. So I've been doing a lot of reading. But I can tell you my placement is with the Bristol University Centre for Supercomputing, which is host to two machines that I'm going to be working with. One called Eisenbard 3, which is a CPU based high performance computer and one called Eisenbard AI, which has a combination of CPUs and GPUs. And Eisenbard AI is oh, it's a hell of a piece of kit. It is seriously impressive amounts of computer hardware. And as much as its name says AI, and it is part of the UK's AI research resource, this is a seriously good computer. And it's going to be useful for so many things other than like AI. And AI is so much more already than like large language models. The things that underpin things like ChatGPT. There is so much else that falls under artificial intelligence, including so much machine learning that underpins things like cancer research for one thing, and astronomy as another. Not that I do it. But yeah, so Eisenbard AI is really cool. Eisenbard 3, also very cool. Similar architectures. And what I'm going to be doing is benchmarking, profiling, and ideally optimizing a couple of programs, a couple of softwares, for these machines. So that means that I'll be running them, seeing how well they scale, seeing where the slowdowns are, where bits are bottlenecking, and then looking into potential solutions for getting these codes to run more efficiently so that we can get the most compute out of these, these high performance computers. So that's the plan. That's what I'm going to be doing for the next six months, and that is as much as I know about it right now. What I'm hoping to get out of it is that I will gain some useful skills. This is obviously very computational, still very high performance computing, it's just not astronomy. So I'm hoping that the skills that I gain doing this placement will be perhaps useful in my PhD for doing things like GPU processing and all that sort of thing. And if it's not necessarily useful for the PhD, that it will be useful when I go looking for a job after it, whether that's in academia or in industry. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for six months. Will there be any space for space? Well, yes, there will be. There will be space for astronomy. I can't go more than like an hour without thinking about something to do with space. So yes, I will obviously have some things with my PhD that just need to sort of take over. Officially, I'm not doing the PhD for six months, but I have things like paper comments that need to be addressed and returned so that the paper can be accepted by the journal. I need to keep babysitting those simulations that I mentioned. They're going to need like queued and data transferred between machines and all that sort of thing. And I have a couple of side projects that just need a little bit of attention now and then to just sort of get them finished on time. And then of course there is this. There is YouTube. There is all of the science communication that I do online. And it's going to be great. I am so excited for stuff I have coming up. I've been sort of new amount of motivation. I've got a brand new camera. That's what I'm using just now. I've got a huge amount of new motivation to just make a load of content for you guys. I am really excited about it. So um, yeah, make sure you subscribe for that. And I guess all that's really left for me to say is uh, thank you for watching this little update. I'm excited for my placement. I'm excited for what I'm going to be able to do here to, you know, keep space ticking on in the back of my brain. And if you want to support what I do, then maybe come join us over on Patreon. £3 a month gets you early access to videos, £5 will get you an exclusive monthly vlog and your name on screen just like this. If you are looking for something else to watch just now, then why don't you have a look at some of the recommended viewing on screen, do the YouTube pleasantries on your way out. I'll see you in the next one.